Welcome to Module 13 of the ICO's Data Protection and PECA Training. This module looks at the role and powers of the Information Commissioner. By the end of the module, you will be able to understand the role of the Commissioner, understand the Commissioner's civil powers, appreciate what criminal offences can be committed under the DPA. Remember, you can pause this module at any time to look at the legislation or even to take a moment to absorb the information. So let's get started. Because this module covers the specific roles and powers of the UK Information Commissioner, we will be mostly referring to the DPA. Part 5 covers the Information Commissioner and Part 6 are Enforcement Powers. There is also information about the Office of the Commissioner in the DPA Schedule 12 and a list of general functions in Schedule 13. But we will also look at the UK GDPR Articles 57 and 58 because this outlines the tasks and powers of the Commissioner. Article 57 of the UK GDPR lists the Commissioner's tasks. They include monitor and enforce the application of the UK GDPR, promote public awareness and understanding of the risks, rules, safeguards and rights in relation to processing, with specific attention given to children. Upon request, provide information to any data subject concerning the exercise of their rights under the UK GDPR. Handle complaints lodged by a data subject, conduct investigations on the application of the UK GDPR and keep internal records of infringements of the UK GDPR and any corrective measures taken. Please see Article 57 for a full list of tasks. A key task of the Commissioner is to produce codes of practice in order to promote the awareness of controllers and processors of their data protection obligations. Sections 121 to 128 in Part 5 of the DPA gives details of which codes must be produced by the Commissioner. The codes are required by law under the DPA, laid before Parliament under specific rules set out within the DPA and published by the Commissioner. They include the Data Sharing Code, Direct Marketing Code, Age Appropriate Design Code and the Data Protection and Journalism Code. The Secretary of State may require further statutory codes of practice to be prepared by regulation. The Commissioner can also decide to produce codes of practice for guidance. For example, the Code of Practice for the Use of Personal Information in Political Campaigns falls into this category. These codes are all found in our guidance pages as they are published. Another key task is handling complaints from data subjects if they consider there has been an infringement of the UK GDPR in connection with the processing of their personal data. The UK GDPR in Part 6, Section 165 states that the Commissioner shall handle complaints lodged by a data subject investigate to the extent appropriate the subject matter of the complaint, inform the complainant of the progress and outcome of the investigation within a reasonable period, and provide an electronic complaint submission form without excluding other means of communication. Remember, a data subject can also complain to the ICO concerning infringements of Part 3 law enforcement and Part 4, Intelligence Services Processing. The fees a controller must pay to the Commissioner are set by the Secretary of State in the Data Protection, Charges and Information Regulations 2018. Every organisation or sole trader who processes personal information must pay a data protection fee to the ICO unless they are exempt. There are three tiers of fees payment. Micro organisations in Tier 1 must pay £40 per year. These are organisations with a maximum turnover of £632,000 
or no more than 10 members of staff. Small and medium organisations in Tier 2 must pay £60. These have a maximum turnover of £36 million or no more than 250 members of staff. And large organisations in Tier 3 pay £2,900. These are organisations which do not meet the criteria for Tier 1 or Tier 2. Some organisations, such as charities and small occupational pension schemes, only pay £40 regardless of their size and turnover. We actively chase non-payers and issue a fixed fine or monetary penalty. These companies and their fines are listed on our website. We also provide a quick assessment tool so organisations can see if they need to pay a fee. Take a moment to pause this module and look at these articles and sections. Article 58 of the UK GDPR lists the Commissioner's investigative powers and these include the ability to order the controller and the processor and where applicable their representative to provide information for the performance of the ICO's tasks. This is done via an information notice. Carry out investigations in the form of data protection audits known as consensual audits. Notify the controller or processor of an alleged infringement in an assessment notice. The ICO is able to obtain access to any premises of a controller and processor, including to any data processing equipment, but needs a judge's warrant to do this. The ICO also has corrective powers, which include the power to issue warnings to a controller or processor that their intended processing operations are likely to infringe the UK GDPR. Issue reprimands to a controller or processor where processing operations have infringed the UK GDPR. Use enforcement notices to order a controller or processor to take specific action to bring processing operations into compliance with the UK GDPR within a specified period, or order them to comply with a data subject's request to exercise his or her data protection rights. And finally, impose an administrative fine in a penalty notice, in addition to or instead of the outlined measures. Please see Article 58 for a complete list of powers. Before we discuss this in more detail, Let's first consider our approach to using these powers. Our approach to enforcement is laid out in our Data Protection Regulatory Action Policy. This explains when regulatory action will be considered, sets out forms of regulatory action available to the ICO, gives guidance on when they will be used and is based on risk assessment principles. Formal action isn't undertaken lightly and aims to be targeted, proportionate, effective and risk driven. Our approach is a carrot and stick approach and our aim is to improve compliance. Our strategic threat assessment or STA is based on the information rights strategic plan and the regulatory action policy. Its objective is twofold to ensure that the ICO has the right regulatory priorities. This is intended to guide decision makers in the ICO to help prioritise and direct resources and regulatory effort to those issues that give us most cause for concern. And to enable staff to identify and share actionable intelligence across the organisation and externally. So let's look at how we exercise our civil powers. Article 58 of the UK GDPR says the Commissioner shall have the power to order the controller and the processor, and where applicable their representative, to provide any information the ICO requires for the performance of its tasks. So if we require a controller to provide us with information and it is not complying, we can issue an information notice. 
sections 142 to 145 of the DPA explain how information notices can and can't be used and what must be included in a notice and the right of appeal against the notice to the first tier information rights tribunal. Article 31 of the UK GDPR gives controllers and processors the general obligation to respond to the ICO. Consensual audits are audits that have been voluntarily agreed between the controller and the information commissioner. They are an assessment of whether the controller or processor is complying with good practice in the processing of personal data. Please see section 129 of the DPA. They are carried out because the controller has requested one. There have been a large number of complaints about the organisation. It has been recommended by an investigation or the organisation falls into an ICO campaign area. These are not to be confused with compulsory audits where the Commissioner issues an assessment notice. Article 58 gives the Commissioner the power to carry out investigations in the form of data protection audits. These are compulsory assessments carried out under an assessment notice to consider whether the controller or processor has complied or is complying with the data protection legislation. Assessment notices cover any controller or processor and can be appealed to the first tier information rights tribunal. They can require the controller or processor to permit the commissioner to enter specified premises and direct the commissioner to documents on the premises. Sections 146 and 147 of the DPA explain how the notices are used to carry out compulsory audits. An assessment notice must include timescales for when each requirement must be complied with and information about the rights of appeal. Now let's consider the corrective measures the Commissioner can take. Article 58 allows the Commissioner to issue warnings to a controller or processor that intended processing operations are likely to infringe the provisions of the UK GDPR. These can't be appealed. Article 58 also gives the Commissioner the power to issue reprimands to a controller or processor where processing operations have infringed the provisions of the UK GDPR. These also can't be appealed. Let's look at two examples. For example, an organisation might send us a DPIA to review. The ICO considers that the proposed processing is likely to infringe two UK GDPR principles. Principle A, lawfulness, fairness and transparency, and Principle E, storage limitation. The ICO issues a warning about this processing and advises the organisation that failure to comply could lead to formal action being considered should we receive complaints. In another example, an organisation doesn't have appropriate technical and organisational measures in place to ensure the security of its personal data. This leads to the disclosure of personal data to a member of the public by mistake. Staff are not adequately trained in data protection the personal data breach is not reported within 72 hours. Because of the specifics of the case, the ICO issues a reprimand. The Commissioner can use an enforcement notice to order controllers and processors to comply with a data subject's request to exercise his or her data protection rights, to bring processing operations into compliance with the UK GDPR within a specified period, to communicate a personal data breach to the data subject, to impose a temporary or definitive limitation, including a ban on processing, and to order the rectification or erasure of personal data or restriction of processing 
and the notification of such actions to recipients to whom the personal data have been disclosed. Sections 149 to 53 of the DPA gives the detail of how enforcement notices can and can't be used, what must be included in a notice and the right of appeal against the notice to the first tier Information Rights Tribunal. For example, an enforcement notice we issued ordered an organisation to stop processing biometric data in the form of automatic voice recognition. These notices are published on our website. Take a moment to pause this module and look at these articles and sections. Article 83 outlines the conditions for imposing administrative fines. There are two tiers of fines. The higher tier concerns infringements around the obligations, for example, on the basic principles for processing, including conditions for consent, data subjects' rights, international transfers, and non-compliance with the Commissioner's investigative and corrective powers. The lower tier infringements are mainly concerned with the failure to meet organisational obligations, for example, to appoint data protection officers, maintain written records, implement technical and organisational measures to ensure security of processing and report breaches where required to do so. Note the higher tier infringements focus on the individual where the lower tier focus on the organisational obligations. The higher tier allows administrative fines of up to £17.5 million, or in the case of an undertaking, up to 4% of the total worldwide annual turnover of the preceding financial year, whichever is higher. The lower tier allow administrative fines of up to nearly £9 million, or in the case of an undertaking, up to 2% of the total worldwide annual turnover. Article 83 says that where administrative fines are imposed, they must be effective, proportionate and dissuasive. When imposing a fine, the factors which should be considered include the number of people involved, any damage to the data subjects, the negligent or intentional character of the infringement, action taken by the controller to mitigate the damage, the controller's level of adherence to codes of conduct and approved certification mechanisms, and the extent to which the controller notified the ICO of the infringement and cooperated with it. We publish the fines we impose on our website. Our civil investigations generally stem from a self-reported personal data breach or a complaint made to the ICO. To conduct an investigation, case officers review all the available information and then send inquiries to the controller to fill any gaps in knowledge of an incident. The inquiries usually focus on what has happened, why it happened and the controller's policies, procedures and training. A civil investigation report will include the information such as a description of the incident, basic case information including breach reporting, third party involvement, domestic and overseas, complaints and data subject notification and initial lines of inquiry. This kind of information will be used to decide if regulatory action is necessary. Let's now look at criminal offences under the legislation. There are a number of criminal offences in the DPA. They include confidentiality of information. This applies to us as staff at the ICO. It means, for example, that we must not disclose information which has been obtained by or provided to the ICO in the course of discharging the Commissioner's functions. This includes disclosure to us by other regulators. We need a lawful basis to do this. False statements made in response to information notices are also criminal offences. 
as is destroying or falsifying information and documents, such as information and assessment notices, and unlawfully obtaining personal data. This includes obtaining, disclosing, procuring, selling and offering to sell personal data without the consent of the controller. It also includes re-identification of de-identified personal data and the alteration of personal data to prevent disclosure to a data subject. The relevant sections in the DPA are in your notes. Remember, the controller is the victim of the criminal offence in these cases, not the data subject. Let's look at a number of criminal offences under the legislation. The first is very common, where an individual might obtain the personal data of another person. In this example, a hospital employee copies the medical records of a famous person. In other examples, an employee steals a database of personal data when they leave for a job with a rival company. An employee sells a list of contact numbers to another organisation without the controller's knowledge or consent. An organisation destroys information requested by the ICO in an information notice. A DPO alters records to avoid disclosing personal data in response to a SAR. And finally, an employee re-identifies personal data which has been de-identified and then discloses the data to someone else. Schedule 15 of the DPA addresses the Commissioner's power of entry and inspection and the issue of warrants in connection with non-compliance and offences. For example, warrants are granted by judges to the Commissioner and can authorise the Commissioner or ICO staff to enter and search premises, inspect, examine, test, operate any equipment used to process personal data and seize documents or other material as evidence. There are other pieces of legislation that our criminal investigation staff have to comply with when investigating offences under DP law. This is the Criminal Procedures and Investigations Act, Police and Criminal Evidence Act, Human Rights Act, Investigatory Powers Act and the Victims Code. The burden of proof in criminal cases is higher than in civil ones. It has to be beyond reasonable doubt that the offence has been committed. In civil cases it has to be on the balance of probabilities. The staff dealing with the prosecutions of the cases will also have to be aware of the criminal court processes in England, Wales and Northern Ireland. There is a different process in Scotland. Before we look at some examples, take a moment to pause this module and look at these sections and Schedule 15. In this first example, the organisation reported a cyber incident to the ICO. It explained that user traffic to its website had been diverted to a fraudulent site. The attackers harvested customer details compromising the personal data of 500,000 customers. The controller had poor security arrangements to protect payment details and name and address data. The ICO issued a substantial fine on the controller. For the levels of different fines imposed, please see the ICO website under the section Action We've Taken. An organisation had a backlog of unanswered SARS. It had more than 1,100 open requests, with nearly 680 over three months old. The ICO issued two enforcement notices, ordering the controller to clear the backlog by a certain time. The controller was asked to change its internal systems, procedures and policies and to improve its SAR handling systems, including the reporting of delays to data subjects. It put a recovery plan in place and committed to addressing the backlog. In this example, an organisation failed to keep the personal data held on its network secure. An employee lost a memory stick which was found by a member of the public. 
This contained over a thousand files which were not encrypted or password protected and included the names, dates of birth and passport details of 10 individuals, plus details of 50 security personnel, which were passed on the stick to a national newspaper and were copied before its return. The ICO issued a substantial penalty fine. You have now completed Module 13 and should now be able to understand the role of the Information Commissioner, understand the Commissioner's civil powers, appreciate what criminal offences can be committed under the DPA, and finally, there is further information on these topics in our guidance on our website and you will find the relevant links in your notes. There are more topics under all the headings in the guidance, but this slide highlights some of the key areas for further reading. I hope you've enjoyed the module and that it's been useful for you. Thank you for listening.